Good evening, Fish Heads and Cowboy Nation. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. Oh, boy. Sickening. Bad management. The spring break front office. Losers. All out. The criticism is really easy to come by. It's legitimate. Some of it comes from people who love the Cowboys, work inside the building, and know what they're talking about. And while none of this should be a shock to you, because you've been paying attention, that doesn't mean it doesn't suck. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter, 40 years covering the NFL, 34 years covering your Dallas Cowboys. I don't really have 10 items. Uh, I may have a million. We'll sit back, put your feet up, relax in your own personal silver and blue easy chair, and let's kick through some of this, dig through some of this. We'll do this with your help. Get in, get on, be good. Bring something of intellect to the table. Uh, if you want to have some sarcastic fun in the Uncle Fish store, and I know you do, Broken Halo is here for you. The link to the broken to the uh, Uncle Fish store is right there. There's your all-in T-shirt, <laughs> and look at the look on my man's face. All in. <laughs> Go get yourself a shirt. I know it's frustrating, but that doesn't mean we can't have some fun here. Oh, and uh, sure, the Dallas Zoo is also in the show, in the store as well. Uh, get in, get on, be good. Uh, I am interested in your comments tonight. We do have the Super Chat Brief Fund with the help of people like Smith Fan 22 with a $20 pitch in. Diddly, diddly, dink, $20? What? Cowboys Nation wants an all-in move. How about Day Hunter? A Mike Zimmer reunion with... Pass rusher Hunter. Yes. As of this moment, he's still on the board. But there's a quote, I think it was Jane Slater that uh, pried this quote out of somebody inside the building. And it says it all. It's three words. No, it's not sickening. It's not bad management. It's not the spring break front office. It's not losers. It's not all out. It's three words. Cowboys are looking for uh, somebody in free agency who is, quote, within our means. Brian Strauss, any insight on Dallas signing Henry? Yes, I got tons of it. To some degree... And I think most of you, 70,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation, understand. Most of you understand. We go, you're Jerry's cheap, Stephen's cheap. I think most of us understand that's that's not exactly right. They have they have decided how they use their money. And over the last decade or so, the way they've decided to use their money is to try to maintain a high plateau of goodness so they can be a contender on an annual basis. They've been fairly successful being a contender on an annual basis, but Stephen, and it is Stephen who's the driving force there, in terms of Super Bowl contention, how's that working for you? It's working very poorly. The part that I don't like, because it's kind of hoodwinking the audience, especially the casuals, All these moves are within your means. They are doable. You can move the money. As I've said so often, since the invention of the salary cap, and I, I was there for it, I covered the 
creation of the salary cap. The salary cap is not a myth. It's real. Cap hell is largely a myth. Lamar, $20 pitch in and the refund. Are they just being hard-headed hard headed, or do they think they can build to the draft? Well, both. They absolutely think they can build to the draft, and they will, and they do. The hard-headedness comes in in not bending the philosophy even a little bit. And by telling Jane, uh, we're just trying to do things within our means, you are, Cowboys, intentionally and purposely putting blinders on as to who you're going to pursue and what you're going to pursue. All these other teams have the same cap that you have, the same exact cap. Different struggles, different years, different room, different years. But the promise of being all in, which we suspected was a PR move anyway from Jerry, now you have a right to be insulted by it. Erica Rambis, who believed that all in mess anyway? No, nobody hosting this show. I told you that. TC, if they don't sign Derrick Henry, I'm done with this team. They let Tony Pollard go to Tennessee. All right, let's do Derrick Henry. There are teams calling Derrick Henry expressing interest. Surely the Cowboys have contacted him so they know not to express much interest. They surely must have some sort of a dollar figure from him that has caused them to say no and probably no a long time ago. I've told you this a lot. Yeah, but he, but he bought a house here. No, he already owned a house here. He just bought another house here. He already lived here in the office. Yeah, but uh, he his real estate agent, I don't care what his real estate agent said. Yeah, but he there is no yeah, but. He's looking at Saquon Barkley's deal going, Saquon Barkley gets $12 million and I'm supposed to sign for four? I'm not signing for four. Jay Williams, big fish. Isn't this par for Dallas? I'm not surprised. Correct. It's the way they've done it for 10 years. And it's not working if the goal is true Super Bowl contention. Josh Jacobs is gone. Saquon Barkley, long gone. Kenneth Easley, fish, talk me off the ledge. I can't. I can just tell you what I know. Josh Jacobs, gone. Saquon Barkley, not only gone, but gone and in your face. In a way that he was never in your face with the Giants because they were never good enough. Ram Garcia, Uncle Fish Premium. Who am I to tell the Joneses how to spend their money? It's not the Joneses' money. This is not, and this goes to the cheap thing. This is not money in or out of Jerry's pocket. It's not the Joneses' money. It's the salary cap's money. Jim Johnson, Derek's too slow. I don't know, man. Did you watch him in week 17 last year? You don't have to sign Derrick Henry, but if we're going to play the cheap joke game, the cheap joke joke about being cheap game, hey, listen, his house is right over there. I mean, you don't even have to place a long distance call. You just walk over there. It's free. Not within our means is a fib almost as grand <clears throat> as all in. <clears throat> These moves are within your means. They're within almost everybody's means. Corey S., this is a rebuild year. If this is a rebuilding year, by the way, a lot of people said that about last year. 
and they went 12 and five, went to the playoffs and won the division. If this is a rebuilding year, and Corey, I'm not wagging my finger at you, then what do you think 2025 is going to be? When at this rate, Dak Prescott might be a free agent, Trey Lance will be a free agent, and Zach Martin might retire. You think this is a, I mean, I don't mean to paint a dark, ugly picture for you. You think this is going to be a bad year? Well, guess what? Des Bryant says, yeah, I'm a little worried this is going to be a losing year because this is bad management. He's talking somewhat specifically about Tony Pollard going to Tennessee. Tony Pollard, $7 million a year. I wouldn't have done that. I think there's another way to go here. I think there's a, because again, you are trying to fit financial puzzle pieces together. So it doesn't have to be on Tony Pollard. But the Cowboys philosophy now and has been for 10 years is we are almost never going to pay the going rate, top rate, top price for top talent. We are almost never going to pay top price for top talent outside the building. And my question to Stephen and Jerry, which I've posed to them before and I'll pose it again. If you never pay top price for top talent from outside the building, how will you ever, ever get top talent from outside the building. Giants just signed Brian Burns. They're spending on it. The Eagles and Saquon Barkley. That's a good one, man. That's a really good one. And then sometimes there's the roll of the dice. I don't know that giving a $100 million guaranteed to Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, I don't know if it's going to work, but that's a winnable division. It's an almost good team. That's all in. They're writing him $100 million at age 35, coming off an Achilles injury. The Atlanta Falcons are all in. I don't know if they're good. But right now, at this moment, not that you would ever trade being a Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, I know. I see it. If they don't sign Derrick Henry, I'll never be a cow. I don't believe you. Yeah, you will. But at this moment, it's kind of interesting to be a Falcons fan. And they're not, they're not, we're not talking about being Ravens, Eagles, Chiefs, Bills. We're not talking about a powerhouse. We're talking about an Atlanta team that hadn't been good for a long time and has rarely been good over the course of 60 years. It's kind of interesting to be an Atlanta fan right now. Because you're watching them and you're going, they're trying. I can do Bill Parcells on Atlanta versus Dallas. Watch this magic trick. I don't even know if you know this story. We haven't talked about this before. I did write about it at, at CowboysSI.com. As you know, the Falcons interviewed Bill. I'm sorry, I hope I didn't say Parcells again. Bill Belichick. And eventually they... I stand by my story. They they acted. He was he's he's an arrogant czar, and it rubbed people the wrong way. But at least they interviewed him twice. They got serious about it. Meanwhile, Jerry held a press conference about how he could work with him. Not that he will or would. Just that oh, I could. But the Falcons are interviewing him. So Falcons don't hire him. Time passes. All the jobs get filled. We joked around, half joked around here. Jerry, if you're serious, you didn't have a defensive coordinator at the time, you really could work with Bill Belichick? Good call him and offer him, the, offer him to be the assistant head coach and defensive coordinator. I mean, I don't, I, would he ever take that? I, I don't know. How do you know if you don't call him? Guess who called him? and asked him if he'd like to be the defensive coordinator. The San Francisco 49ers called him. Kyle Shanahan called Bill Belichick and said, would you be interested in being the defensive coordinator here? Remember, this is after they fired Steve Wilkes after the Super Bowl. You want all in? You want 
talk the talk versus walk the walk, there's your difference. It's not just NFL free agency. It even goes to making phone calls about the coaching staff. Jerry held a press conference to announce that he might. The 49ers didn't tell anybody, and they did. We, we could call him. We did call him. That's the difference. Mike, we got hit with high prices for every position and setting the market, making budget. I'm not, I'm not endorsing. You got to pay whatever it takes to get Tony Pollard because Tony Pollard's not the best running back of the market. By the way, the only way to be better at running back right now than you were with Tony Pollard on paper is Derrick Henry. Otherwise, you will be worse at running back than you were, probably. Um, Tyler Biadish, $10 million a year as he goes to Washington? Probably not. In fact, I told you, I told you this morning, somebody was going to pay Tyler Biadish twice what Dallas would pay. And I think that's exactly what happened. I told you that somebody would pay Dorrance Armstrong twice what Dallas would pay. He got a deal. Now, this is billed at three years, $45 million. It won't really come out that. $15 million a year for Dorrance Armstrong? No, I'm not doing that. You take him. You, you know, go get seven sacks, and some of them uh, for uh, Washington are going to come against you. I'm not paying fifteen million. I'm not paying forty-five million dollars for seven sacks. There's smarter and better ways to do things with your money. So um, do them. David R. Five dollar pitching. Who's running the ball for us? You know the Cowboys are incredibly innovative, but surely they'll have somebody play running back. And the plan all along was to draft one. But here's the problem with saying we're really not going to be very active in spending the going rate in free agency. We'll fill in some holes. We'll coach them up. But we're going to really rely on the draft. Here's the problem with it. You need a run-stopping defensive tackle. You need a run-stopping or more linebacker. You need a starting offensive lineman. Now you need a starting running back. Probably, uh, I'll stop there. You're going to get four starters in the draft? You're going to get four starters in the draft. Picking 24th. Last year, you had a first round pick and a second round pick, and using those two picks, you got zero starters out of your draft. But this year, you're going to get four starters? That's the problem. With, as a matter of policy, saying we are never, ever, ever going to pay the top price for the top player, and we're going to rely on the draft. You can't just rely on the draft. Carson, I hope that I answered that question for you. Thank you for uh, participating here. The best teams use all the avenues. The Cowboys just say they use all the avenues. They do not use all the avenues. They absolutely, positively never pay top price for top talent. Brandon M., is it fair to say that Steven's more in charge than previously thought? Not more in charge than we think. No, he's exactly as in charge. Jerry once, I said this live on the radio a couple years ago, and Jerry actually called in live to the radio to make fun of me when I said that Stephen has his hand on the pen. And then I used one of Stephen's funny lines when he said, uh, Jerry's going to be in charge around here until they put a tag on his toe. And I said that on the radio, meaning, you know, when Jerry dies. And Jerry called in, said, Mr. Mack, I'm driving right now. I ain't got no tag on my toe. And I got my hand on the pen. No, there's no... There's no, there's no shock here about 
how this works. What sucks is how it doesn't work. <laughs> That's what's rough. The evidence, the 10 year evidence, not the 29 year evidence, the 10 year evidence says it doesn't work. Alan Rogers, hey, just convert Sam Williams to, well, well, maybe. Why don't we get Sam Williams to make sure, intellectually speaking, he can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time before we start assigning him new positions? But maybe. Uh, Dan Quinn, taking all our guys. Eh, overpaying for some of your guys, but getting some other guys. I thought Austin Eckler, I thought there was a possibility he wouldn't be tier one. There goes that. Travis, everyone in the division got better. Uh, Giants, maybe. I think Saquon Barkley's terrific, so maybe. Eagles, yeah. Washington, yep. Is there a Mac Jones lesson to be learned? They use the first round pick on him. He goes to the playoffs and the Pro Bowl his rookie year and goes diddly diddly downhill after that. On the one hand, you kind of look at that and go, you know, you got Dak Prescott. It's hard to find a Dak Prescott. Most guys turn out trying to be Mac Jones. Just keep the keep the Dak Prescotts you got. Then on the other hand, you're going, Steelers pulled off a beauty here. You put Russell Wilson on a good team. Denver was a bad team. So his first year there, he was a bad quarterback. And last year, he's a mediocre quarterback under uh, one of the original bullies in Sean Payton who learned how to do it from Parcells. Parcells, baby. You put Russell Wilson on a good team and let him be a bus driver? Watch watch and see what the Steelers do. Steelers will be way better off than they were with trying to grab bag it. And you know what they're paying him? Because Denver still has to carry $38 million worth of the freight. They're paying him a million dollars. So if you really want to rub it in on yourself because you're in a bad cowboy mood, the Cowboys are considering paying Dak Prescott 60 times the amount that Russell Wilson is getting paid. Chad Clark, the all-in move is re-signing Dak. And they're not even proactively doing that. I'm not even sure they're convinced they're going to do it. Matthew, we'll wait till day 15 to grab a backup to a backup. I, I, I'm with you. You'll wait till day 15, though, um, to probably hire a good player who fits nicely here. Right? Drawn curse. You, you, you need your whole team can't be superstars. You need your own curse on. You need a drawn curse on your team. You need 10 of them. And then you need five of them to mature into really good players. That happened here. So tier three, you're, you, you sign guys off tier three. But if all the other teams are signing guys off tier one and you never do, you will eventually fall behind. VJ, we can't even afford to pay Henry. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Max, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, and and Jane's one of the best in the business. But I've already t I've been telling you this for a month. I don't care how many real estate agents tell how many radio guys that Derrick Henry is going to sign with Dallas. The longer he stays on the shelf, the more you can go ahead and daydream. All, I've told you all along here that that it's not real. It's not realistic. It's fantastical. Wouldn't it be something if Derrick Henry wanted to be with the Cowboys so bad that he said, I, I, I just want to come and win a ring in Dallas. 
hey, if that happens, I'll do a show on it. I'll write about it. We'll celebrate it. I've been telling you for a month, the Cowboys and Derrick Henry is not the thing that people think it's think it is. So choose where you get your information from wisely. The national media people said it was happening. Fan blog said it was happening. YouTube said it was happening. I said, don't hold your breath. I hope you took my advice. Otherwise, you're dead. When the, when, uh, yeah, in answer to your, David, your general question, David Martinez, the cop, Jerry and Stephen, and I don't know their exact status this week, except I, I will shortly. I don't want to comment on it prematurely. They annually really do. Jerry takes the grandkids on spring break for real. And Will holds down the fort. And we were the first ones to write about this. I was the first one to find out about this because I would, because they, uh, they, they sent me photographs of the family in Turks and Caicos on a yacht. And I talked to Stephen about it. He said, I got a phone, I got a laptop. And I talked to Will McClay about it. He said, I'm, I'm at my desk. But no, you probably, you probably shouldn't go on vacation. <laughs> if you're the general manager of an NFL team, you probably shouldn't annually go on vacation on the day that NFL free agency opens. Probably a bad idea. Dwayne, the Cowboys shouldn't pay Dak so much. Did you pay attention to quarterbacks that left some on the table to get other players? No. no, Dwayne, I'm not very familiar with the big long list of quarterbacks who say, I'll take less. I'll take $5 million less so you can go sign a backup guard. I'm not familiar with that big long list. I understand why uh, the public wants Dak to do it. And I think, frankly, it would be a masterstroke, public relations wise, on the part of Dak Prescott, if he did that. If somehow it was it, it, it leaked out into the ether that he wanted 60, but he signed for 55 because he wanted to give his teammates more money. It'd be grand. I think that'd be, I, I think that'd be, I think that'd be worth $5 million in positive public relations. Stephen Cowboy A, not happy with the news I've been hearing. I know, but not happy, but not surprised, right? Ramon, Uncle Fish Premium, they don't watch enough games to see who the great and good players are. I, I don't know if you're talking about the media, the Cowboy Scouting Department, the Cowboy Coaching Department, they, they know. But they clearly also knew that they weren't going to be a tier one buyer. And therefore, why not go on vacation? I'm not doing anything anyway. What I was going to say is we, we broke this thing wide open to the point where the Cowboys were really mad at me because it was, it was the honey badger year. Brenda, are the Cowboys planning on drafting and running back? Yes. And the Cowboys went on vacation and we're not, I, I called it asleep at the wheel. Word got out that Honey Badger was interested in talking with the Cowboys, but the Cowboys never got around to it. So he signed somewhere else. And of course, he's a difference making NFL player for the last decade or so. And I asked the Cowboys, about, I, I, I told the Cowboys, I'm going to write the shit out of this. He wanted to get a hold of you. He couldn't, couldn't find you. And the Cowboys' answer to me is, was, well, you know, he, he doesn't fit our system. And I roasted him 
for it. And they're probably just now getting around to forgiving me. But I was right. I was right that year. Uh, it exposed a gigantic cowboy philosophical flaw. And the same philosophical flaw exists now. Kurt S., not many high-priced free agents are worth the money. The, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Kurt. It depends. There's no way of knowing if Kirk Cousins is worth the money until they start winning or losing games. We have no idea. I will tell you that the Rams, the year they won the Super Bowl, they thought Matthew Stafford, who they traded for, Odell Beckham, who they got as a street free agent, uh, Von Miller, who they traded for, they, 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 they thought they were worth the money. I will tell you that the Buccaneers, when they won their Super Bowl, they thought Brady and Gronk were worth the money. So it depends. The problem with the Cowboys is we, we have no Dallas-based evidence of what you're saying, Kurt, that, well, if we signed a high price free agent, it wouldn't work out anyway. We have no evidence of that because it's been since Brandon Carr that they even tried. Monroe, what's Dak thinking now that he has no center? They, 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 maybe they'll draft a center. Be a good idea. Uh, it's a great draft for centers. It's a great draft for tackles. But again, as we sit here right now, they need four starters. It's too bad they don't have four first-round draft picks. <laughs> they get a starting left side of the offensive line. They get a starting center. They get a starting middle linebacker. They get a starting nose tackle. Wouldn't that be great? Peyton, Piquet, I'm going to close with this. Do you think they have interest in Aaron Jones? Peyton, I'm going to urge you and 70,000 Cowboy fans who are also fish heads. This is why you got to read CowboysSI.com. We did talk to a source who says the Cowboys are interested in Aaron Jones, who uh, he got cut today, a little contract dispute with the Packers. Okay. Spot track says he's $5 million. Done. So, yes, the Cowboys are interested in Aaron Jones. That's a fact. Exclusive, exclusive. You heard it here first. But go read CowboysSI.com. We got it all covered. Michael C., $5 pitch in another refund. I'm done with this team. Steven's a joke. We'll never win a Super Bowl again. I appreciate your passion. And I don't want to challenge you on this. Because you get to do what you want to do. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict that you're wrong. You've been a Cowboy fan for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Ah, come on now. Pull up a silver and blue chair. And let's work our way through this. <clears throat> Bless me. Together. Fish. Out.